Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Java 101. This is where Java starts to get very interesting. In this episode, we are going to learn how to write our own classes. You have done this before, we have our main class right here, but we're actually going to learn how to design our cu uh, a custom class, um, and it'll make more sense in a minute. So, for this, um, this uh, our, sticking with the RPG example, we're going to actually design a player class, and this class is going to represent a player. Um, right now, we have the health, money, and name stored in the main class right here. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a class which represents a player, and that will store the health, money, and name. Now, even though these are only three variables, and it's not terribly um, you know, important that we would have a second class, it's very important to know how to design um, classes, because... You know, it's very important to know how to make classes, and it will come in handy when you have large projects. So, right-click on your package right here, and we're going to make a new class called Player. So, as you can see, we now have this empty class called Player. This class is going to represent a player, and that's really what a class is. A class is basically a representation of a real-life thing. In this case, we're representing a player. Um, you know, there might be a class that represents a human, or, you know, different, there are lots of different classes. Um, then there are other classes, like the scanner class, which is a utility class for reading input, and then, like, the main class, which is just, you know, the class that runs stuff. But, for the most part, when you're designing classes like this, they represent real-life objects. So... With a class, when you're designing it like this, you need to think of um, what information goes with this, what information goes with this, and then what methods do you want to include with it. In the case of a player, we need their health, their money, and their name. So those are the three variables that we're going to put for the player. Then, we want methods to get the health, get the money, and get the name. We also want methods to set the health, set the money, and set the name so that we can change it later. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare our variables. Now, when you declare a variable inside of a class like this, first of all, nothing is going to be static. That's because we're doing this, this is not in a static context. This is its own class. There's no main method in here, and you'll see why um, in a few minutes, but there's no main method. Nothing in here should be static. So first we're going to go ahead and declare the private string name. We're calling it private because this is only we this is the visibility modifier again, and we only want the, this name to be accessible to the player class, not even the main class. The reason why is because we're going to write a getter and setter for it, and you'll see in a minute. But we want this to be private. The type is string, and we're calling it name because it represents the name of the player. Notice that we're not, um, you know, actually setting it equal to anything because um, we're going to do that um, with the set method. You don't want to um, set this equal to anything because this class represents a player, so you don't know what the name of the player is. It's just, that's just a field of, it, it, it's a data value for the player, so you're not setting it to be anything. Then we're going to have a private int health. Now, I could instantiate this to 10 or get max health, but I'm not going to because it's usually bad practice to um, instantiate stuff outside of the constructor, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, and then the last thing is a private double money. Again, not going to set it equal to anything. The next part of designing a class is the constructor. Uh, the constructor, it works sort of like a method, but it's called when you um, create an instance of the class. A good example is scanner. So when I instantiate scanner 
and I say new scanner, I'm creating a new instance of this class, and then this system.in is the um, parameter that I'm passing it. So it works sort of like the print method where I pass it a string, but here, when I create it, I'm giving it something. And in this case, it's going to be the name. So anytime I create a player, I have to give it a name. And then the constructor is the first thing that happens as soon as you instantiate something. So I'm going to go ahead and write public player. Notice that there is no return type. A constructor doesn't return anything, but it also doesn't return void. It's just used when you instantiate. So I'm instantiating the scanner, and this particular constructor is running. So in this case, when I instantiate, it's going to take a string name, uh, or I'm just going to call it n, and you'll see that this works like a regular um, method, except it doesn't have a return type. You don't explicitly call this, it automatically runs when you instantiate the player class. We're going to go ahead and say name equals n, health equals 10, and money equals 19.99. So when we instantiate player, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, you are required to give it a name. Whatever name you give it is what this becomes. Health becomes 10, and money becomes 19.99. Next, we're going to go ahead and write the setters. A uh, Sorry, the getters. A getter method simply just returns a value. So um, first, we'll write one for the name. Public string get name, and then return name. So if I call get name, it's just going to return this variable. It's just a getter, and it gives access to the variable. Again, public int get health return health, and public double get money, return money. So, as you can see, all these methods do is return the value that's associated with them. So if I call get money, it's going to return their money, which will be 19.99 to start. Next, we're going to want to write the setters. Now, um, I'm not going to write one for the name, because once the player gives their name, uh, right now at least, there's no way to change it. Uh, but as far as health and money, that is definitely important. So I'm going to go ahead and write public. This is going to be a void set health int h. And then we're going to say health equals h. This is a void because it's not returning anything. It's just changing something. It's called a setter. And we're giving it the new health, and it's setting this health equal to the new health. Then we just need public void set money, and uh, or sorry, double m, and then we're going to say money equals m. So we're setting our money equal to the new value. Now it would probably be helpful to write a method for modifying rather than outright setting. So we can just do that really quickly just to show you. We're going to do public void modify health. Notice I'm not calling it set or get because we're not setting it or, you know, whatever. We're just changing it. And it's going to say int h. And then we're going to say health minus equals h. Or in this case, we'll make it plus equals. Which means that if I modify health and I put in 1, then it will add 1 to health. Plus equals is the same as saying health equals health plus h. It's just a faster way of writing it. So if I were to put a negative one, it would subtract one from the health. That's helpful for like in the shop when it subtracts one from the money. Instead of doing set money to get money minus whatever, then we can also do public void modify um, money double m, and then we're going to say money minus equals m. So, or sorry, plus equals. So if I put in one, it'll add a dollar. If I put in negative one, it'll subtract a dollar. That's basically all we need, and that's pretty much all that we're going to need for the player class. It represents a player. It has the three um, pieces of information for a player. It is a constructor that takes the name and gives all the variables their values. It has the ability to get the values of all three variables, set the health, set the money, and then just utility methods to modify the health and modify the money. Now, when we go over to our main class, we're going to have to change a bunch of things. So first off, we're going to remove the get max health just because it was a sample and it's not going to be useful anymore. 
We're going to also remove health, money, and name. And then what we're going to do is after we ask what the name is, we're going to say string name equals s dot next line. Then we're going to say player, player equals new player name. Now, if you look at this, it looks almost exactly, other than the words, it looks exactly like the scanner. So we're instantiating an instance of our player class that we just made. We're naming this variable player, and it's equal to new player name. So it's calling this constructor with the name so that the name, this variable, will become whatever they input. Health will become 10, and money will become 19.99. Now you'll notice that we have a ton of errors because we just got rid of money and health and name and get max health. So we're actually going to go in and change that. So the first thing, we're just going to go through and... So first for the money, we're going to go ahead and say if player dot get money. What we're doing here is instead of, so we don't have a money variable here, but we do have a method called get money that returns their money. So we have this player object that we created and we're, we're calling the get money method on the player, just like how an input we call, or a print, we call the print method right here we're actually using this object that we created and we're calling a method on it. Now if I were to try to do player with an uppercase as if I were using the class, that will not work. That's for static. And you, that doesn't really need to make sense right now. But basically we're creating this instance of player. So if we're checking, so any of these checks, we need to check for that particular player. So again, if player.getHealth plus one. So if the player's health, instead of using that health variable, we're just saying if the player's health plus one is greater than, I'm just going to hard code 10 back in just because. Then we're going to say we have money minus equals one and health plus equals one. We can go ahead and say player dot modify money to negative one. So it will add negative one or subtract one from the money and then player dot modify health to 1, so it will add 1 to the health. Now again, we're calling get health on the player right there um, because, you know, we're checking for that particular player. And then again, right here, you can actually just copy this, except the money goes up 1 and the health goes minus 1. And it looks like those are all of the errors. So um, let's just go ahead and run this, so I'll show you that it does in fact work. So if I go ahead and say, what is your name, Pogo? So it says, welcome to adventure. Um, oh, that's supposed to be, instead of name, it's supposed to be player.getName. Uh, so let me just run this again, just to show you. Uh, because this name just, when we instantiate a player, we pass it the name, and from now on, everything we do comes from this player. So if I run it again and I say Pogo, you'll see it says Welcome to Adventure Pogo because I called get name on the player. Since I set the name to Pogo or whatever they input, get name returns what they entered, which is Pogo, and that does work. Now if I say go to the store, um, you'll see it says I have max health. Um, so let's go to the forest and then go back to the store. And you'll see that it is working without error because um, this player object and all of these methods are working behind the scenes to do all of this stuff. So this pretty simple player class is very important in this game. Now when you get into bigger um, things, and especially like inheritance, I will, it'll come in more handy. But um, it's very important to know how to do that, and that's pretty much it. That's... That's everything that you really need to know as far as designing um, a class. Now, when you get into inheritance, there are other things that you want to that you'll learn. But for now, that's definitely a, a strong overview of class construction. So that's all for this video. We created a player class, which represents a player, contains all of the information, and we also made methods for getting and setting the information. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.